MongoDB is a pretty big deal. It is part of so many tech stacks, including the popular MERN and Farm stacks. It's fast, flexible, and perfect for modern applications. But if you've ever worked with NoSQL databases like MongoDB, there's always seems to be an issue that creeps up, and that is just overall data structuring. Sure, MongoDB's flexibility is great, but without a proper way to define and enforce structures, things can get a bit messy. That's why in this video, we will be covering Beanie, an ODM offering a clean Pythonic way to manage MongoDB's data. First, we will go over what Beanie is and how it can help your application, followed by a coding tutorial using Beanie. Also, a quick note, I'm using Docker to spin up my own local instance of MongoDB in the coding section. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I have helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So what is Beanie? Well, Beanie is an asynchronous object document mapper, also known as an ODM, that enables CRUD operations and other advanced MongoDB's functionalities using Pydantic models for data validation. This makes it a great choice for modern async Python frameworks. Beanie works with Pydantic because each database collection has a corresponding document object. With this, Beanie saves you a ton of time when building a project using MongoDB. Essentially, Beanie allows you to focus on the parts of the application that matters and not get dragged down by the things that don't. Also, as a bonus, Beanie supports data and schemas out of the box. Now that you have like an overview of what Beanie is, quickly hit that subscribe button and let's dive into code so you can see Beanie in action. All right, so let's go over what we already have. So we have a main.py, which already has fast API installed, where we're using our context manager to get started with a lifespan just to initialize the database, which we don't have created yet. We have our app, which is equal to fast API, where we pass in our lifespan. And then we have a router, which is calling our post router. And inside our post router, we have a bunch of functions with no business logic yet because we need to fill that in. So we have our post, our gets, our update, and our delete. And then we have this one just normal function that throws an exception if post is not found. And we'll do that when we kind of like query the database. So we already have our main and our posts complete. What we need to get done is our database and our models. Now, before we even get started with that, I'm going to be using Docker to instantiate a Mongo database for me. So if you have Docker, go ahead and run this command. If you don't have Docker, just go ahead and install it real quick. It's free and super fast. It works on Windows and Mac. So go ahead and just paste in this command. It's in the, the code in the descriptions link below, or you can just type it by hand, but it's Docker pool MongoDB slash MongoDB community server latest. Go ahead and just install that. That's going to download the image for MongoDB, and then we can start the container. So after that gets installed, go ahead and just say docker run dash dash name MongoDB using the port 27017, and then we're going to say at the same image we just downloaded. So once you do that, it will be installed and running. I have Docker desktop so we can see right here that we downloaded the latest image and then inside here we can see that it is running our local MongoDB. All right, cool. So now that we have MongoDB running, we need to install Beanie. So we can just say pip install Beanie. Now Beanie will come with another dependency called motor. We can see it right here. Motor is needed. That makes the ORM async to MongoDB. Perfect. All right. So the very first thing we want to do is let's go into our database and let's say Mongo URI is going to be equal to MongoDB colon slash slash and then our local host port 27017. That is where our MongoDB lives. All right. Perfect. Now what we want to do is go into our main and right here we are calling this await initialize DB. We want to create that functionality. So we need to say async def init DB. And then we want to say client equals async IO motor client where we pass in our Mongo URI. 
Now we're gonna get this yellow line and that's because we need to import this. So right above here, let's go ahead and say from motor.motor asyncio import this async IO motor client. And then once you add that, that is needed. Oh, I forgot the parentheses after init. So now that we have our function with our client equals asyncio motor client with our Mongo URI, now we just need to say await init beanie. And then inside here, we'll say database equals our client dot blog. And our documents models are going to be post. Now this init beanie is going to be something that we also have to import above. So let's go ahead and say from beanie import init beanie. And then this post is going to be from our models once we pass it in. So just for now, we can say from app.models. And we know that we want to import post. Now this isn't necessarily going to work yet. And that's because models is empty but we'll add it here in a second. So boom, just like that, we have our database connected up to our local MongoDB. Now, if we go into our models, there's a few things that we need to do. Now, what's nice is we can use Beanie in like conjunction with Pydantic to make sure that we have data validation and all the necessary items we need inside our application. So to start, I'm just gonna say, we wanna import Pydantic. So I'm gonna say from Pydantic import base model, And then from typing, we know we want to import list and optional. And then there's going to be a date time object. So we can say from date time, import date time and time zone. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to create is our Pydantic object called post request, which is going to be the data validation that we do when we submit a post. So we can just say class post request, our base model. And then type is going to be an optional string, content is going to be an optional string, and tags is going to be an optional list of string. Now, if you want to learn more about these commands inside of Pydantic, I have multiple videos on Pydantic where you can add whatever data validation you would like. Now we're going to be creating our beanie object. Now our beanie object is going to use something called document instead of base model. But to get started, let's go ahead and make sure that we import document. So we can say from beanie import document. And now we're going to be pretty much doing the exact same for the actual object. But this object is what's getting saved inside our NoSQL database. So what we're going to say here is class post instead of post request and document instead of base model. Now it's going to have title content and tags, but also it's going to have a published which we want to always be equal to true. And then we're just going to add a timestamp. So we can say created at date time, which is going to be equal to date time dot now time zone UTC. And then we need to add a collections name for this document. And that's going to be sitting in a nested class called settings. So let's go ahead and say class settings and make sure it's nested. So inside our post document, and then our class is inside here, where we can just say our collection name is gonna be equal to posts. All right, perfect. All right, so now that we have all of this created, so we have our NoSQL documents all created, and then our database, which initializes the database. Well, now we can go ahead and jump into our post.py and write up our MongoDB information here. So to start inside our create post, which is our create functionality, we know that we're gonna be taking in this post request of post request, which inside our models is going to be this. It's gonna take a title, a content and tags. And then we want these two variables to automatically get added. 
which they will because we're setting published to true and we're setting created at as today's date and time. So we just know that we can say post equals our new object of post where we have to do a model dump of our post request data, which just means we get all the information from the post request itself, turn it into a post, and then post will automatically add those last two variables. We can then just go ahead and say await post.create which is going to create and add that to the database. And then we can just return the post once that's complete. So when we run the application, we'll be able to create a new post inside our MongoDB, a new document. Now what we wanna be able to do here is fetch all posts. So what we can say here is our posts is going to be equal to await post.findAll to list. And then we want to return those posts. For fetching a single ID, we want to do something fairly similar, where we can just say post equals await post.get post ID. We probably want to check to make sure that post is correct, so we can throw in a throw exception post. And then just return the post if everything is good to go. And don't forget that this throw exception post is actually right here. So we have this throw exception, which if post is none, we just raise an HTTP exception saying post was not found. It's just an easy way for us to have some reusability with that. All right, so now for updating, the first thing we wanna do is fetch the post using the post ID, and then we want to update the post using the post request. So we can go ahead and say post equals await post.getID, We want to make sure that this post is real, so let's go ahead and just say throw exception of this post. And then await, and now we need to update this post with the new request information. So we can say await post.update, and inside here we want to use set, which is a document MongoDB way of saying we are going to be setting this document information. Where we can do our request.model dump, and we want to make sure we exclude unset data, which means we're not going to override any of the other data that's already there. We just want to grab whatever data is in the post request. And then after that is complete, we can just return await post.get the post ID. And this probably isn't the best way. We probably could make this a little better by not having to call this each time. But this is a simple way of doing it in this simple application so we can see um, exactly how to update a MongoDB page. And then for delete, we want to do something similar where we are going to say, we're just going to copy and paste this, where we're going to say post equals post dot get our post ID, throw the exception if needed. And then lastly, we can say await post dot delete, which is going to delete that post from the database. And since that post is now deleted, the best thing to do is probably just return a message saying post deleted successfully. All right, so after we add all this, let's go ahead and try and run the application. So I'm gonna say fast API dev app slash main dot pi. And now let's go to our localhost slash docs. If we try and get any of the posts, we can see that it's empty. So let's go ahead and just create a new post. I'm gonna say coding with Roby. Content is going to be learning to code. And we can just maybe do this a few more times. All right, we'll execute that. We can see that it went through. So if we say get posts now, we have one post and it automatically adds this UUID as an ID. I'm going to grab that. If we come down here and we say we want to get a specific post and we pass that in, it's right here again. If we want to update it, we can just pass that in and we can say new title with a content going to be new content. If we execute this, we can see that it was successful. So now if we come back up here, we try and call that same UUID. We get the new information because we overwrote it. And then lastly, if we go ahead and we delete this UUID, we can get the post deleted successfully. 
So if we come back up here and we try and run, we're gonna get a empty list. So that's how you can use async beanie to connect your fast API application to a MongoDB. And I'll see you in the next video.